seen official list. So, commissioners, pursuant to 71 IAC 3.5-1-3, Horseshoe Indianapolis is required to submit its list of racing officials for official approval. Horseshoe Indianapolis has indeed submitted its flat racing official list for 2024 race meeting. Eric Halstrom is here and he'll make a few comments and answer any questions you might have afterwards and vote is required. Okay, Mary. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Eric Halsman, Vice President, General Manager of Horseshoe Indianapolis. Um, Mr. Rothenberg stole my thunder there, but this is you know our annual request for the employees that run our program, the racing officials and whatnot. Um, I spoke to Ms. Pittman a week or so ago. This this list tends to be kind of fluid throughout the year. People come, people go, especially when you're running for seven months like that. But this is the, the group that we think will start. There's been some changes. They've been, uh, you know, you can see the notation on the request. And as like it always, when somebody does come or some goes, I work with Eric Smith and the stewards as far as making sure that their replacements are uh, suitable for you know IHRC standards. Yeah, you see that it looks like there's about four changes there with the little red asterisk that helps. Any questions for Eric on the official list? Seeing none, we'll accept the motion and the second. So moved. My second. Moved and second. I guess we have no questions. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next is the consideration of Horseshoe Indianapolis's request to amend the expected 2023 capital. Why does that say 2023? Okay. Right. They were living in the past. I'm on the old agenda. Yeah. Right. We have to do what went out there. Well, anyway, expected 2024 capital expenditure plan and substitute with already 2024 purchases. Very good game. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Commissioner. Um, so you, you have the list in front of you. This is a you know, rolling capital list here now is about six years old and. A conversation Ms. Pittman and I had last week trying to explain some of the there was an escalator in pricing and different equipment that we thought would six years ago would need to be purchased. It's really hard to hit that on the on right on the button at this point. But this was a year where most of the capital that was in there we needed. We had some vehicles that needed to be replaced. Um, we also had several you know, slightly less used vehicles that we're planning on keeping and moving into different, you know, less critical positions. But as every year, you know, the, the shock factor, when I went through this and then explained to Ms. Bittman that the escalating of the percentage that we assumed from 2018 to 2024 is just not even in the realm of, you know, we all know that. But um, so a lot of these vehicles are far more expensive. We kind of economized, tried to get a real good assessment of what we've got and then had a little bit left over to try to buy some things that we need. We're seeing with the year-round training that one thing that we're going to come back a lot with is Harrow's. Um, they, they have really taken a beating over the winter. Um, so we've got a request for three of those in there. Um, some snow pushers, which this winter we got through without uh, much trouble, but you know, darn well, we're going to probably need them at some point. Um, and then we've had a couple other things. There's a gator. We've got some heist requirements that have made some issues with some getting people around our facility and whatnot. Um, but normal things that I think we've come to this and let you know at least our staff try to do a thorough process of getting new vehicles in, keeping the good ones, and then you know, filling in what else we needed for right now. So the spend is about. Fifteen and a half thousand more than the correct program, but you're getting stuff you need as opposed to just buying stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sure. Chairman. Okay. Any questions for Eric on the capital maintenance? With the Harrow's, is it just you said it's due to the wear and tear that you're asking for three? Or can you explain that a little bit more? Sure. Um, the you now we've gone to this is our third year, third year now of winter time training. What we're seeing that the colder surfaces in the winter just take more wear and tear on the harrows. The harrows are the ones that scratch the surface and whatnot. Um, we actually got a harrow last year too. 
this week. So we're we're going through them pretty quickly here. I, I would think that three and the one we've got the year before probably not going to need one next year. However, there's no question having them out there 365 days a year or you know, six six days a week, you know, the entire year is starting to take a toll on that that equipment. Any other questions? Okay, how about a motion? So moved. To amend it. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, next is consideration of Horseshoe Indianapolis request to continue the reduced takeout for 2024. Okay. Uh, yeah, Chairman Boris, members of the commission, this is also has become an annual request. This is our third year making this request on some of the pick wagers, the pick fours, pick fives, you'll see them in the request. Uh, this has Joe Davis and Chris Duke's signature on with it. We all feel like it's been a good part of our, uh, the reason why our handle has increased like it has. Um, we've got really good marketing spin that comes along with the, these reduced takeouts on these certain wagers, not just the, the select ones that you see there. And we repeat this request again. You have to support our horsemen on this too. You accept the motion in a second to approve. So moved. Second. Then moved and second. And any questions for Eric on it? It's been very beneficiary. Uh, seeing none, all those signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Continuing with Eric here, consideration of approval of the export locations for Horseshoe Indianapolis for 2024. Yes, Chairman Boris, members of the commission, this is obviously something we do. This uh, We've had such a, a good uh, upswing from this segment of our business. Um, our, our buyer and seller of our signals, Monarch, is the one that puts this group together. These are uh, locations outside of our racetrack who will at some point likely wager on our races. We get them all on there, try to get approval for everything. If they can, if they show up, that's great. Most of them are. Um, you'll see in that request that there's still an issue with the racetracks in New Mexico that the HPPA is trying to work out. Um, and we respect that their right to be able to, to withhold any type of um, other places from coming into our, our, to our pools. Um, I'm told that they're working on that. I know there's been some dialogue between them. You know, any questions on that, I'd probably leave for you know, Mr. Elmore and go from there. But we will respect what the HPPA and the National HPPA is trying to work out in Mexico. So roughly how many locations are there? I, I think there's four racetracks. Um, Sunray, Mexico. Um, how many roughly do you have of the locations that we we're going to approve, there's a ton of them. Yes, yeah, so I think it's up to around 400. So mm -hmm. we're talking about a very small number, um, and, and with hopefully it works out because we want everybody to be able to participate. That is a small percentage of the handle that comes in every day. It's very small. Okay, I accept the motion for approval for the export locations for for shoe. I move to approve. Second. Uh, any questions about exporting? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, a big one. Update on the Clips Day at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Yes, April Chairman Horse. So April 8th. If you I've lost even more hair since we made this decision to try to run on that day. Um, but we have, we are really excited about what we think we can do on Monday, April 8th. We'll, we'll see what happens. I told her, as with Jessica in the meeting yesterday, I told her we expect somewhere between 500 people and 50,000, and we're not sure which. <laughs> One of them will be able to serve us better than the others, but um, this is something we got to try. We're, we're all Googling when the next time we get to do this, and pretty much Google says none of you will be here, so let's, let's give it 744 years. Yeah, yeah, that, I don't that's think what we'll be Google here. told us too. So, we're, we're all set for stuff. We've got um, you know, food trucks, we've got entertainment, we've got bands that will play through, we've got a good schedule that we've set up with our horsemen. We've got six thoroughbred races that day. We'll start at noon, run to about 2.30. The 
the height of the eclipse is 306. Yep. So we'll take a break from 230 till let's say 345-ish. We'll we'll give a little more time at the end. Um, we need we have light, so if we need to, if it gets a little bit dark before that race is gone, we can turn the lights on. That's no problem. Turn them back off for the effect of the eclipse. But um, I, I think we got good cooperation. We understand. We've worked with our horsemen on making sure we get horses in. We're asking the horsemen to bring them to the racetrack the day before. The biggest fear, and not surprisingly, is gridlock. You know, if we end up in a spot where um, just interstates are <laughs> a mess and whatnot, then it might be tough and it might be more difficult to get people in. However, we've done everything we could. I actually, my bag, I've got uh, 20 for the commission staff, 20 of the Eclipse glasses that we'll be handing out that day. And yes, they are ISO approved and FDA certified. Um, I tested them yesterday on the brightest light I could find. Stood about two feet from it, could barely even tell if there was a light up there. These things are, these things are good to go. I've got some for you. If you're not able to get out, at least you got something. You know, 700 years ago, we'll remember that we we all shared the clips together. So, are they logoed? They got our they've got our stuff on. Them. So this is yeah. At some point, they'll end up on eBay. As I guess. Good marketing. I did, I did notice that you are, are advertising on TV, and I scanned the QR code there for the racing for the star sweepstakes or something. Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, promotions that day. And Tammy Knox and her staff, we've got a, a pretty good, solid handicapping contest that day. That you know, we're not going to forget about business completely. This is for an on-track experience. And, you know, we wouldn't normally only have eight races. We have more than that every day when we've got thoroughbreds and quarter horses, but it's mostly what we're doing on track. But while we're at it, we might as well see the rest of the country. We're, you know, we put it out to the simulcast world to watch our signal and the things we're going to do during that down period when there's no, you know, there's no daylight. Um, Trying try to make a, a good show out of what, what happens. But in the end, we had to try this, see if we can go. Yeah, so the guy from the old promotion, they lost. Do you have a filter for your cameras that you're going to put up on the screen? So we actually have looked into that heavily, and that one's a more of a struggle oh, than yeah. finding. It's a big deal. It is. Um, and there's some expense to it that we've kind of choked on as far as some of that. However, we got some some different ideas with some other camera stuff that we, we definitely don't want to ruin that HD camera equipment, mm -hmm. but we so, got some other ideas. So, so there's a guy that does stuff like this. So the other way to do it, We'll talk later, but you, not that I'm promoting an iPhone, but an iPhone you can filter very easily and yeah. broadcast that, and, and it's not going to be very quality, but yeah. you'll be able to put up on the screen. Yeah, I was TV. wondering if you got that because that filter is yeah. yeah, there are TV folks, including Rachel, have got some thoughts on the iPhone being a part of what we show that day instead of our regular cameras. I mean, no little iPhone, I got an Android, a little short, but, but it, it'll, it'll work. Any other questions? It's more of a comment as opposed to a question, but I really appreciate any coordination with the community as well. Um, I think with the public safety and, and the mayor and everyone that's uh, part of the community, I think this is a really community-wide effort. So appreciate that coordination uh, working with the park and the community. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. No other questions? I guess we'll move on. You're off the hook for now. Uh, next is ratification of Executive Director Pittman's approval of export locations for Hoosier Park 2024. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of Commission staff, Rick Moore, Vice President, General Manager of Racing, here is Hoosier Park. You know, I was here a few years ago, just a short few years ago, and I was uh, proud to tell you that uh, our signal was going to in 500 lo over 500 locations. I'm more pleased today to tell you that we're at 859 locations this year with 165 new locations. Now, there's a lot of small, very small locations, a, a machine and a sports bar, you know, it, it, a lot of those type. But still, our signal is getting out there throughout North America, into the Caribbean, down into Australia. So I'm very, very pleased that the, the, the Heritage Park harness signal is being well received. And, and, and I want to give... Uh, Niver Content Management, 
a lot of kudos for the way they've been able to distribute our signal. So, ask, uh, I hope you, I know uh, Executive Director uh, Pittman has given her approval. I hope you are, are pleased with what you see as far as the number of outlets that are receiving our signal. And we're, uh, we're very proud of it. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Moore? Yeah, I've noticed how many of the work. Yeah, that's a lot. It's come a long way. Sure has. Big changes. Uh, how about a you know, motion to approve the ratification of the Director? Approval of the, uh, and the ratification of Director Pittman. Uh, second. Somebody? Second. We we'll moved and second. Any further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next is the uh, consideration approval of Harris Hoosier Park 2024 standard red racing official list. You know, um, again, I'm pleased to let you know that all of our uh, folks on this list are, are returning. They're all previously licensed, except we got one addition, a, a young lady by the name of Gina Parisi, who's a backup charter and program director. Uh, we've also added a, a number of backup positions, uh, as we did last year, so that we're not scrambling coming to uh, to Dina to ask for approval on a specific day when we need someone to fill in. But the good news is everyone's been licensed in their capacity before, except for one person, and uh, we got a very experienced crew that does a great job each and every day. Good. We'll have a motion and a second to approve the official list. Who's your part? No move. Second. Moved and second. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Glad it's a stable list. Uh, next is a rulemaking update. Uh, David, I guess you're going to tell us where we're at on that. Yeah, just, just a very brief update. Uh, to let you know, the legislative session ended. And we were uh, trying to get some legislation passed, which would allow for certain references in our standing rules to, to continue because it didn't pass. Um, I am going to have to change, make a few rule changes to update references to the ARCI uh, model rules and penalties. So there will be a few more rules that I'm going to ask to get passed. Uh, it's nothing big. Again, just updating. It doesn't change anything. It just updates the references. As far as the readoption of rules, I'm probably going to wait until they need to be readopted this year. So I'm probably going to wait until uh, I get these other rules passed before going through the readoption process, which we how long before. Okay, thank you. Questions? Um, how how long will the readoption last? Is this an annual thing? The readoptions are now every five years. Every five years. But we have quite a number of uh, rules. So I'm going to be readopting them 20% at a time every year. So we're not adopting all the rules in one year. How much additional time is put into this? How, how much extra do we now have to do because of this requirement? Uh, it's a little bit different because we used to have emergency rule making liability, which we no longer have the last legislature. Uh, we should just remove that. So it takes a little bit over probably maybe 200 days to get a rule passed now, where in the past we were circulating among the horsemen and the tracks and everybody get feedback and then we would just vote at it here. Uh, it will take a little more of our time since this is the first time we're really going through it. I don't have an estimate, but I know it's already taken a lot more time than it has in the past. I hope you'll keep track of the time and consumption that this requires. Thank you. It's job security for that end of the year. There you go. Um, next is a HISA update, and in that we'll have a ratification of Executive Director Pittman's approval of the first addendum to the voluntary implementation agreement. Yep, I can I can start chilling. Matt Chilling sure. starts. Um, we have discussed uh, a bit in these uh, in these meetings previously uh, about the federal litigation involving HISA uh, and and its constitutionality, uh, including a potential lack of oversight 
uh, by the federal agency charged uh, with the oversight, which is uh, the Federal Trade Commission. I discussed in the commission meeting a year ago an amendment to the HISA legislation uh, passed in December of 2022 uh, that strengthened the FTC's oversight of HISA. In your booklets, I've included a couple of documents uh, that reflect just that, uh, that the FTC seems to be indeed taking its oversight of HISA seriously. Uh, the, the December 2022 amendment permitted the FTC to not only accept or reject regulations proposed by HISA, uh, as the uh, act had originally allowed, uh, but the FTC uh, could now add to and modify those regulations. So the uh, the the last uh, uh, excerpt in in your booklet uh, is a four page uh, four pages from the Federal Register uh, that shows where the FTC uh, both added to and modified HISA budget rules, uh, essentially in part to try to get the budgets published for comment and eventually approved in a more timely manner. Uh, that seemed to be an issue in 2023 and 2024 for HISA uh, and their budgets. Uh, I'll paraphrase from that Federal Register. Uh, the FTC's approval of HISA's budget will happen only after the FTC is satisfied that the budget is consistent with and serves the goals of the act in a prudent and cost-effective manner. Um, we can only hope that that's the case, uh, and we look for that to be the case with the new rules promulgated uh, uh, by, by HISA. The second document, uh, the longer document from, uh, from ARCI, uh, that was sent to us from ARCI, uh, includes the proposed rules by the FTC that would require HISA to submit certain financial and performance information to the FTC and would encourage HISA to promote accountability uh, and transparency of operations. ARCI sees this as a step in the right direction uh, and commission staff agrees. Uh, we've certainly all, all sought increased transparency with HISA, uh, especially financial transparency. Uh, and we hope that these proposed rules uh, would, would, would help get there. Um, in November, of 2023, HISA uh, and, uh, submitted 388 pages worth of rule changes to the FTC regarding medication. Uh, two months earlier, they had submitted 62 pages worth of rule changes to the FTC uh, on racetrack safety. Uh, so to date, none of those uh, have actually been promulgated yet by the FTC. Uh, but that is 450 pages worth of rule changes, so you know, we're expecting that to take uh, to take some time uh, for approval. Uh, now we can get to ratification of uh, Executive Director Pittman's approval of the first addendum to the Voluntary Implementation Agreement uh, between the IHRC, HISA, and HIWU uh, that was executed on February 16, 2024. And that extends the voluntary implementation agreement that was signed on May 17, 2023, through and including December 31st, 2024. Uh, the addendum itself <coughs> focuses primarily on, on two subjects. Uh, the first subject relates to those 62 pages worth of proposed rule changes regarding racetrack safety uh, that are awaiting FTC approval. Some of those proposed rule changes uh, affect the current agreement. For instance, roles and responsibility for our staff at the track. Uh, the addendum in your booklet will automatically update the agreement with, with the affected rules once they are promulgated. Uh, so it makes for a smoother transition once those rules are, are in place. Uh, the second thing uh, with the addendum really is just updating some names of those who will fill certain roles uh, and responsibilities from the 20. 23 agreement. Uh, so having reviewed this document, uh, commission staff recommends ratification. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. I know Dina has some updates as well. Do a vote first? Let's do a vote first. Okay. So we need a motion to uh, ratify Executive Director Pittman's approval of this first addendum. Anybody have a motion and second? 
So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions before we vote for that at all? When do you anticipate? When do you anticipate that? Do you anticipate it before the end of this year? I honestly, in looking at, at, at how the FTC approves rules in the past and and the, just the sheer volume of these rules, I have no idea. And, and people that I've talked to uh, in the industry have no idea. Yeah. Okay. So, so, for the record, you don't know, they don't know. Right. I imagine it's going to take a while. It could take a couple years. And, yeah. But I'm not. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of the ratification say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Further update? Yes, commissioners. Uh, I thought it might be uh, a good idea. The chair and I were speaking um, not long ago, uh, and HISA came up. Uh, one of the things that uh, I thought it would be nice to go over, especially considering what Matt just went over with their efforts towards the FTC's efforts towards transparency. Uh, was just to go over the assessments, the credits, the true up, and then um, the contribution by the commission. So in 2022, um, they just, uh, we had the first arm of the um, authority, uh, and that was the safety rules that came into effect, and that was for half a year. So the assessment for that year was $412,000. Um, that was the total. There were no credits, no true ups. The IHRC contributed approximately 137,500. In 2023, the assessment went to uh, 1,862,000. Uh, with using our own staff out in the, in the test barn, uh, we received a credit of 450,000. And an actual true up came in a little bit later of $23,608, which pulled the invoice or the assessment down to approximately um, 1.389. The IHRC contributed at that point 389000 For 2024, this year, the assessment came in at $2.395 million. Uh, they're estimating uh, a credit to the commission of 490000 for using, again, our test barn employees to collect samples. And so that would be a total due of approximately $1.9 million. We don't know um, yet what our contribution for 2024 will be. Um, uh, there's a potential for an additional $500,000 credit for out-of-competition testing. Um, and that would also um, bring that, that dollar figure down. I do want to mention in 2023, the IHRC incurred additional expenses for test farm contract bets at $47,500 and program administration by the equine medical director and the deputy general counsel. Those are numbers um, uh, for the equine medical director and our attorneys that um, we don't have an actual dollar amount on, but that's part of what we do on our end to help facilitate HISA regulation out of the racetracks. So it just keeps climbing and we have no control. It does, it does. Unfortunately. Questions? I don't want to prove a bomb, but if that's a, if that's a trend line, whoa. Well, that's right. Okay. That, that was an official comment. <laughs> and it's for stuff we've already been doing. That's what the shame of it is. Extra costs. Any other questions? Uh, I have a request. Dina, could you <clears throat> maybe cut that summary of the current experience from the beginning to what you just in a printed version and just email it to us? Yes. Uh, something a hard copy that you can yes. create on that. And what is the explanation for the increasing cost? More regulation? Does this involve personnel as well? Is well, personnel we're, we're hoping for some growing? transparency on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I would have to guess it's them adding personnel mm -hmm. uh, so that they can go through it and continue to regulate the things that they need that they feel like they need to regulate. Um, also, additional maybe educational <coughs> programs. 
um, building their IT systems, uh, legal fees for the suits that are being filed. And so, where does it end? Where, where do we cap it at some point? We don't know. They're still trying to figure out what they're doing, too, so that's part of me. Okay, we'll hope the transparency works, because then we'll get to see those budgets. And at least somebody's going to review them. That's, that's an important thing. In the past, they've just done their own thing. Nobody's reviewed them, so that will be a problem. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay, moving on. Consideration of request from IHBPA to transfer the ADW funds to supplement the thoroughbred purse account. Good morning. Um, Tim Gleishall, the executive director of the Indiana HBPA. On March 14th, our Indiana HBPA board uh, unanimously agreed to transfer our ADW funds to purses um, so that it may benefit both thoroughbred owners and trainers. Uh, the Indiana HBK would greatly appreciate your, the commission to approve this matter. What was the amount? I do not have the total amount. The there you go. Approximately $800,000. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Tim? Welcome, by the way. Thank you very much. We got that other guy up there kind of yeah. hanging around. He's but helping. Hopefully he's helping, yes. Very helpful. <laughs> um, accept the motion to approve the transfer. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other questions? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next on the agenda is review and consideration of the Racing Capital Fund Committee expenditures approved and submitted by the fund committee members. I think, we'll, I think we're going to maybe start with Joe on that. Is Joe going to start off? I, I think, think he may call other people. I don't know. <laughs> Looking at the clock. Good morning, commissioners. We've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Joe Morris, Caesars Racing. Uh, here is the chairman of the RCFAC. I did want to throw one comment into the HISA side of it. We greatly appreciate what the commission has put in on that. This year, in a split between the HBPA and uh, Horseshoe Indianapolis, our shares are over $900,000 each, straight out of purses. And uh, where it stops, nobody knows. And it's lawsuits, it's more personnel, it's technology. And as the chair had said earlier, that track was probably 95% ISA safety compliant, and we've got all that additional expense. And we could go on and on about that. Uh, I'm here to talk about the RCFAC in, in specifics for Horseshoe Indianapolis. Hoosier, we are still going with the approvals that we got last fall, and we will have some updates on that for the next meeting. Uh, Horseshoe, as, as uh, we all know, we came out of the gun, uh, out of the shoot firing there in year one. It's a ten year. Uh, it's a ten year fund. We're uh, we're at year four right now. Um, left to make the same decisions going back to year one. We'd have still built the barn. We'd have still built the dormitories, and we'd have built the Eurosizer. We have had great results out of those investments for this year. Um, we have 2.5 million in the queue. Some of it you've already approved. Some of it we're putting in now. Uh, I, I, I can't wait on uh, April 8th to show you our new video board. That was an $800,000 investment and it, it, it's special. It, it's got the wow factor that, that the fans will really like with that. That, that was already built. We have the 30,000 for the surveillance cameras on the back stretch. We're in the middle of about a hundred thousand dollar project on that right now, uh, with coverage in outdoor areas around dorms and the laundry mats around the guard shack, in the area where horses come on and off out of the receiving barn. But that, that'll help our situation out there. The big one, and, and I'll come back to it uh, at, at the end of this, is the backstretch community center. That's plugged in at 1.3 million. We winterized barn seven. That was our quarter horse barn. We'll have a few more of them in. 
We house about 600 horses there this year over the winter. Uh, it's the most we've had to date, and uh, we, we winterized that barn at 109,000. We've done more grading. That, that backstretch really had a lot of drainage issues. We've been fixing them over the four years. Uh, that is the last one that we think we have. That was another almost 16,000 uh, footing and, and drainage for the turf course, air conditioning for the jocks quarters, more speakers. We still have some sound issues we're fixing. Heaters for dorms. We've got the dorms. We need some extras sitting around. So if one goes bad, you can take it out and, and, and put it in. Uh, steam room, receiving uh, bar and mats. There's high traffic areas in the receiving bar, which is about every day when we're racing. We need to remap that for safety. You can't have uneven footing for a horse and step in and get their foot half in, never mind the people leading them. Um, track kitchen, we got some exciting news there. A guy who has done the HPPA fish fries and other backstretch events has taken over the kitchen. Mel is his name. I think we're going to have to call it Mel's Diner. But uh, <laughs> Mel is great in, uh, in working with the HPPA. We're hoping to have some guarantees <laughs> or subsidies for dorm workers and the likes. A, a dorm worker, a dorm liver shouldn't have to pay $7 for some eggs. We ought to be able to help from, uh, from you know, in between to, to get there. But we're really happy to have Mel there. And then we're going to put a shelter out by the gate crew. There was one there years ago. Uh, so on a rainy day, we've got a crew out there working horses through the gate. In between sets, they can stand in and get under. And I've actually asked them to look for one for the horse, too. But other tracks, I've had them where you can back that horse into the shelter on a rainy day and they can still see the track. So uh, that, that's what we're looking at for this year. In year five, with that spend and where we're at, we would probably just come in with 50,000. So through the halfway mark, assuming we do 50 next year, we would be at 10.5 million of the 12.5, uh, which would give us just under 400,000 a year for the last five years. And then, uh, as we all know, that fund then refunds itself. So there is another 10 years where Caesars puts another 25 million into that pot that goes 12.5 to this track and 12.5 to down there. Um, so that, that's that's the uh, that is the overview of it. I take a break here and take uh, questions. I, I did want to talk. And I'm sure there'll be some on the community center, so I did want to go down through that from the chair I sit in and then hand it over to the chaplains and uh, the HBPA head and the quarter horse head and then uh, have Brian come up and talk about it. Uh, it, it it's a need from the RCFAC that, that um, we think is needed there. I can. We've looked at other spots as directed by the chair. We, we couldn't find one that we thought was suitable at the track that's already built. Uh, Caesars would put the land, it's right across the street from the entrance to the barn area. So that's a convenient place for the people who live in the barn area. In At other tracks, I've been at, and they do a great job there, not, not, but, uh, but they're, they're somewhat handicapped to the size of that trailer one and two the fact that it is in our licensed area um, and um, at other tracks i've had those uh, community centers just outside the gate now spouses that might not have a uh, a uh, license can use it family members children uh cousins, others, but the community can also use it if it's outside the gate. Um, worship, it, it, I mean, it's important on a backstretch. And currently in that trailer, there's the meeting table we sit at, and people have to stand up against the wall all the way around it because it fits 20, 25 people. So we'd like to be able to expand that. But more, more important and in areas that I think we could do more and they, they try hard there and, and they touch on a lot of these that just don't have the facility to put it in as efficient as it could, but language classes. 
We have a very Hispanic uh, population that, that works in horses. We, we've always run more language classes, not only for the participants that are licensed, but for their family members. It helps. It helps them fit into our communities better if they can speak the language. Uh, accounting classes, not developing accounting. When I say accounting, I'm talking checkbooks. Uh, amazing how many of these workers are sending money back to Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras. They, they don't always know how to do that. And I've seen them taken advantage of at times in those areas, uh, and, and even in their check cashing, uh, but, you know, where they where they get an, an exorbitant fee to cash a check. And, and, uh, so you know, in the, the accounting side, we could do more immigration classes. How do we get them legal? We we could bring in lawyers and experts to help work them. The, the more of them that are legal, the better off we are. And again, the the, the person working at the track may have that status, but they may have family members that don't. Um, and then that, that's a scary place for your workers to be at. So we could do more there. Substance abuse services, there's more we could do there. Mental health services, there's more we could do there. Family services, we could certainly do more with the kids and some of the family. And in this community center, it gives uh, the chaplains uh, more uh, of a chance to reach out into the community and do more for them. So that, that's kind of how we look at it. Um, I'd like to have you, I know some of you, you know Otto and Mickey, uh, and then Joe Davis and Ms. Myers and then Brian, but I'd like to bring them up and let you get their perspective on it also. Uh, you know, rubber meets the road with Otto and Mickey. They're the ones out there talking and working with these people every day and they want to do more, they could do more if they had the facility to do it. So uh, why don't we have Otto come up, if, if there's more questions, I'm ha happy to. Yeah, if I've got one, I guess, how do we distinguish between, on um, some of these things like the AC stuff and the floors, how do we put that in this capital fund as opposed to Caesars doing it? Why isn't that? Well, I, I, my first comment would be that this fund is funded by Caesar. I know. So, I mean, it's twenty-five million that know. came out of our check. But out of normal maintenance, normal. Yeah, stuff, and, why and it, it, it is used normal. in areas that are are touched by our horsemen. So I mean, it's it's, it's up to, that that would be a decision for you. We think they're good. They're 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 part of the overall backstretch upkeep. A lot of it. They, they benefit jockeys. They benefit the the trainers. Well, I'm not questioning that. I'm right. just questioning why wouldn't Caesar do that? Why isn't that a normal maintenance that should be done every year to well, keep those up? There. Maintenance we do, these are replacements. Right. So the replacements, I think, meet the capital requirements. Uh, maintenance, you know, we do. I, I, I consider these replacements and on replacements, I think uh, those go to capital when you're replacing a whole air conditioning season. Uh, 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 system or in this barn, we're replacing a uh, however many year old footing system actually with a better system than the one that is there. And I don't know how we distinguish that. What if the AST goes out here? Will that be in the capital fund or does that go? Yeah, I, I, we, that, we, that's why I'm trying to figure out how you figure it out. Right. We go through the committee and we vote it at the committee level. We try to look at benefits for uh, backstretch, you know, customers. Horsemen, gamblers, uh, 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 we think are all fair game in who we're trying to spend that money on. I'm just trying to figure out the difference between, yeah. like if this went out here, surely you wouldn't go to that capital fund to replace this. I wouldn't think. We, we have never done that, so I would I would say that's probably correct. And that's why I was trying to figure out why that's any different though in the back stretch than here. I'm not saying it doesn't need to be done, I think right. it does. We want the comfort, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I can't, I can't comment that I think a year or two ago, we had an air conditioner go out in the test barn, and I'm, I'm not, I don't think that replacement of that air conditioner in the test barn came out of this fund. And repairs certainly don't. I mean, it's a capital fund, so repairs right. do not come out of it, but legitimate capital is considered <laughs> and voted on with the, uh, with the group. Okay. I guess it just depends on who the board is. What, I don't want to, don't ask me why I know this, but uh, when you increase the camera count, and more importantly, how often the, the recording 
have you uh, also increased the capacity for storage? I, yeah, I, I didn't do the design on it, but I, I'm sure it, I'm sure it has. When they come in, we usually get about 20 days storage off, off the off. That was my next question. Since we use those cameras in our enforcement, in some cases, is that accurate? Uh, those are important to us, and it, it would be nice, maybe off offline, to know the number of cameras you have, uh, the capacity you have, and if, if there's sufficient time for us. And when do we make the call to you saying there's a potential and that you have the ability to download that before it's I'm assuming it gets recorded over? Yes. Correct. And it goes up, as I said, it, it holds for roughly 20 days, three so weeks roughly. Yeah, that's the rough Tip, because I've typically. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it can be 10. So, so I'm just urging staff and you all to make sure that you know those capacities, particularly with the increase in cameras. Yeah. If you're if they're can and zoom and they're kicking off the motion detectors, if that it'll bite you. Okay. I appreciate that. We'll have auto come up. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I'm okay. Chaplain Otto Thorward. Um, as one of our chaplains at Horseshoe Indianapolis, our main objective is to serve the needs of the backside workers at Horseshoe. This is not only limited to the horsemen, but also extends to security, maintenance, and even into the marketing and management. We really are a large family, and it is my pleasure to serve as the chaplain there. As you know, Horseshoe is located well outside of town, and most of our backside employees do not have their own personal transportation. This community center would give them a place to be counseled, entertained, and discipled. Back in biblical times, early church met in houses, upper rooms, and hillsides, but the evolution of modern churches has conditioned people to feel the need for a building before it's considered a church. I got to see this firsthand at Oakland Park back in the 90s. While riding as a jockey there at Oakland, I attended the weekly service that the chaplain held in the track kitchen. <clears throat> we would have anywhere from five to 10 people a week show up at this service. Shortly after that, Oakland decided to build a community center just like we are proposing. And the service attendance quickly grew from a handful of people to 30 to 40 people a week. Now, as, as I was just home last weekend, their attendance is ranging around 80 people a week on their chapel service at the track. I believe this comes from a feeling of ownership within the backside employees, feeling that they have a place of their own to be a part of. This building will give us an opportunity to minister to the backside at Horseshoe in a variety of ways. I would like now like to introduce uh, my associate chaplain, Mickey Sache, to discuss what some of those ways would be. Welcome. Thanks so much. Thank you for the opportunity to stay here. I want to thank everyone for the opportunity to be here today. I want to talk about the community building. I will, I will be a great blessing for all community backside. We have families who work there and people at the same time that they left families in our countries. I think it will be a good place to get with them. We believe in families and the unit of families. Many of people have left their countries and family for a better future. The place has given them opportunity to better the family. At the same time, many have gone to the wrong way through the drugs, alcohol, and other things, which is available to this community building will be great for using a backside community because I will be to serving in guide to who I need to follow this good way to walk in. I have been able to see many young people at work here and decide to go to the college and Noros and follow a career at the track site, like trainers, owners, or something like that, have good ideas for dance, uh, having a community building, and promise to offer to the young people can be needed to change to go into the wrong way. We believe through the work of God 
accomplish a very good things or community. Wednesday and Friday, Adam and me have a Bible studio to teach him to walk in and with the good teens to stay about out to the drugs and alcohol and helping these guys to walk in a better life and helping these guys to to better future. I have always believed in God and this is a good opportunity to help in our communities and it's not only Shelbyville, it's in the backside. It's a group of people there, and that's how opportunities. And this is an opportunity to help this guy. That's out on me, notice all these things. And it's on my place to serve him and the community and the backside. Thank you, Mickey. Who else we got coming in there? Joe's coming. With the lights we just can't see very well. We're all gonna wear visors, I think, or something. Well, there you go. Thank you. Joe Davis, President of the Indiana As president, I see a great need for this. And Joe, can you move the mic? Yeah, sure. I'm not quite as tough, short as Otto. <laughs> <laughs> and it has more than the HBPA's complete support. Not to remember to Ms. Meyer. Thank you. Welcome. Good, thank you. Good afternoon. I am Teresa Myers. I am the executive director for the Four Horse Racing Association of Indiana. Um, we also, as horsemen and also as our board, we are 100% in support of the community center. Um, basically, you know all the reasons they, they have stated. I'll turn it over to Brian. We'll see if he's as brief as you do. <laughs> you know better than that. <laughs> Brian Elmore, Indiana HPPA. Not to get off track for the subject matter is I do appreciate Chairman Bush your question of the monies and how they're spent and where they come from. About two years ago, I stood in this very room at this very platform and asked this commission if we could get some kind of description how this is done. And I bring this up only because I know the two casino general managers, Trent and Colin, are both here today. And I don't want them to get any ideas, okay, on the horse rate related matters. This item is probably the most important item on your agenda today. And Commissioner McQuaid, so you know, we have about 150 dorm rooms at Horseshoe Indianapolis. A hundred of them are 10 by 10, concrete block rooms, concrete floor, and we have 50 that are 12 by 12. And for 225 people, for eight months out of season, this is their home. This is what they have to live. Now, some of those rooms that are 10 by 10 are shared by two people. So if you want to look at the square footage, you get 50 square feet. Now, state prison, you get a six by eight room, which is 48 square feet, but you have the luxury of a toilet in your cell. And this, they go outside, but nobody's complaining about this. Everything that's been done has been done right. And I'm, I'm very thankful. To where we've gotten and i'm thankful for both otto and mickey and their commitment to ministering all i'm sure you know i miss what you may not know but otto is a movie star otto starred in the disney movie secretariat he's also an author mickey comes to us by way of guatemala and coming up through here and they're both doing an outstanding job and we're very very thankful again i'm thankful for the support of both the qhrai and hbpa board of directors thus far our CFA C monies have been spent wisely and benefited the horsemen, their guests, and Caesar staff. My favorite holiday is celebrated this coming Sunday. I suppose many in this room will be attending services at their church or synagogue. We're hopeful that next year, in 2025, we'll be able to offer Easter services at our facility, Community Worship Building, 
out of Horseshoe Indianapolis. In closing, I know this board is an appointed board. Thank God you're not elected officials, you know. I don't want you to have to do that. But you are appointed by people in government. I just happen to have a dollar bill and a quarter in my pocket, of which is issued by the government. Now, on the back of the dollar bill, it says, In God We Trust. Right under George Washington's chin, it says, In God We Trust. The people that you've heard today speak, that's what we believe. We're asking you to trust us to be able to build this facility to benefit the livelihood of the people that work and live in Horseshoe Indianapolis. If that answer any questions, we'll turn it back over to Joe Morse or whatever. But thank you for considering this. Do we have any questions for Brian or any of the other? I, I guess it would be nice to have a little more backup on this. A million three with no backup. I mean, I heard what they said, and it sounds like all those things are good, but maybe a little more about what kind of building we're talking about. Is that equipment? Is that just structure? Why don't I have Joe Morris address that question? Okay. That's why, that's really the only thing on here I'm leery of right Thank now. Chairman, I have a question. Dean has a question for Brian or for Joe? Uh, Joe. Okay, you're off the hook. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you describe, um, I, I, I know that there was conversation previously about doing something like this. And there was, um, uh, I think the committee or you and some other individuals were going to be looking at other locations on the property to see if those could fulfill the need for now. And then as things grew, um, then there would be a larger need to, to build a separate um, structure. Yeah, so we were instructed from a meeting like this when we talked about it. Right. We, um, we convened a meeting, uh, a bunch of us. The, the one spot we had in our thoughts was, I call it Grandstand West. So if you're standing in front of the, the Grandstand building, you got the main area where we do simulcasting, and then you got the other room down there. We couldn't possibly do it there. Challenge is getting to it. It, 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 it's just not, there's no parking near it. And, we, and then there's times of the year when we need the space for racing. Uh, Kentucky Derby coming up, on opening days, super days, that type of thing where we still need to have that space for our, uh, our racing program. So the, the committee's um, thoughts at that time was uh, look, you know, look at the whole property. We then walked down to the, the paved area on the back side where we built the new barn, couldn't really get in there well and it couldn't figure it out. And it just kept coming back to that soccer field right across the street from the entrance to the barn area, right across from the track kitchen, the, your office is the racing office. And we just kept thinking that was the best spot. Caesars then said, okay, you can do that. So there's, there's no land cost in the million three. It's Caesars, and uh, that that would go there. We do have some rough drawings that have been uh, priced out on, and I've got just rough figures on the uh, what the get, getting the utilities in and whatnot. So we we still need to go to architectural on this to draw it. Uh, we'd have to get the the you know the grades for parking, the drainage, and where the water comes. So there's still more work to do. But we think the million three is a good number from talking to the people we've talked to so far. And you don't you don't think there's any um, need to kind of start smaller and then grow? We, we in, in, in looking at it, we just think if we can get to this building and start it that way, it, it's the best chance. Again, I go I go back to that grandstand spot. You know, I, it's a long walk to get in there. I mean, you, you, if you're parking, you're probably on the other side of the parking garages and trying to walk in through with what we're trying to uh, uh, use for services there. And then if you live in one of our dorm, dorms that Brian just talked about, we have a couple hundred people living out there. Long walk from the dorms to be able to get up there when they're just walking out the front gate and across the street to. And, to and the speaking of the dorms, are the dorms fully occupied? 
they're not at this time, but our barn area isn't. But they, they get during during the yeah, I mean it, it's like a hotel. If you're ninety something percent occupied, I think you're occupied, but we you know we get to that level. With it, we, we still need Oakland to Oaklawn and Tampa Bay to close before we get our final load in for, for our summer racing. So uh, they, they get to within you know the ninety percent uh, level of that 1.3 was good. That number was voted on by the RCFAC, I don't know, say three weeks ago when we had our meeting. Any other questions for any? And, and if it, as I said, if it goes to bid and it's higher, I mean, we, we, we can do 10% more. We can't go more than that without your approval. So as we gather the stuff up, we'll, we'll make sure the staff sees it. And, do you have Both. off the top of your head the square footage of this building? 50,000. Yeah, that's what I was going to say 50,000. 100 by 50. Yeah. I'm sorry. 100 by 50. 100 by 50. 120 by 50. You're going to say you can go 50,000 for one free. I'm coming to you. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a tough one. I, I just wish we had a little more to go on. I wish there could figure out a way to have a win-win here somehow. But if we could approve it contingent on something, I don't know what that would be. I'm just a little uncomfortable in turning that loose without more information. Do you want to like take that portion of it out and approve the other and then wait for additional information? I mean, how soon do you think you could pull stuff together? We could certainly have it together. Assuming your next meetings in June, thereabouts, we could have it ready for that. And we, we'd entertain a contingent upon you know getting the paperwork in. But we we kind of like to know that the concept is good and approved. If, if we could you know get that approval today, well, I think the concept is good. But I don't know. Well, maybe it's it's going to take you a while anyway to pull all that stuff and get the right numbers maybe we could put that part this part off till june and do the rest of it do the other two hundred and seventy-two thousand worth and then that's not going to affect time or anything because you got to go do your due diligence between now and then i don't know somebody have any thoughts on that i just feel a little more comfortable than a little more for a million three yeah, I, I definitely appreciate the project. I can't say enough how supportive I am of that. I think um, some of the questions that are just unanswered and, and just hearing kind of the scope of how it evolves, you know, if it starts small and then it grows bigger, if there is, I, I know it sounds like it's a little bit inconvenient, but if it can start out while we're getting the paperwork together, that might be helpful. So. Okay. Well, I just, one challenge with, with that is, I mean, we will incur expenses on design and architecture and all of that, uh, at, you know, to be able to get to be able to bid it out. That's the part that you know, gives me a little bit of heartburn because that, you know, that um, somebody will have to pay for those expenses if, if this doesn't come down. So when would that happen, probably? Well, we, 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 we'd be going right, right out for it. You know, over the next bit, we, we would be getting this thing drawn, and we have rough uh, conceptual now, but we actually have to, you know, as you know, we got to get architects, and it's got to be certified, and we've got to go to the towns and start to have the meetings on the uh, permits that we'll need and the different types of drainage work that we'll need. So that's what really starts the clock on, on the project as far as having bills to pay. I just wish you had what you're going to do with that just today. I don't know, been nice. And if you're already ready to go with it, I wish we would have had it today to see it. Does it does it work to just uh, pass a, a set number? You know, maybe it's a hundred thousand, maybe it's two hundred thousand, just to to allow them to go through and do the the back work and and be able to pay for it out of the fund. I don't know. What would you think a number would be to, and then do the rest later? That way, nobody's holding the bag for anything. Hundred thousand, Chris. You got a, would you have a ballpark on that, Chris? Yeah. You're going to want a construction manager budget. You're going to want permits. You're going to want to get. Do you have a program? And do you have a written program? Do you have schematic designs or not? I think they said they have some roughs. 
Yeah, that's, that's not so bad. A lot more perfect. Is this your building? <laughs> <laughs> I know enough to be dangerous. I uh, hi, Chris Duke, President of Corridor Association. Uh, they had reached out to me. To, uh, we actually looked at a few buildings last year, uh, a few other builders. Um, and so when the budget was put together, we kind of put a design together square footage wise. I think square footage wise, we'd probably be around uh, 8,000 square foot. Um, as far as the, uh, the cost to get the land uh, together, get everything prepped you know storm sewer everything in there you're probably talking about two hundred thousand dollars and that's that was looked at through the uh, uh what was already proposed is there in place uh, from the traffic that's there now that, that would cover like county uh, permits and that type of thing yeah it would, yeah, it would be the design work up to the bid process that's kind of what we want to scope so yeah. probably fifty thousand. So what are we at? Is a hundred thousand good or not? Does hundred thousand get you the right start you need? Yeah, so again, I want to be careful, but are you talking about some magic design, design development, for construction documents, critical documents? I, I would say we're designed to the to the bid documents. Yeah. That sounds like I said, I'm looking for a win win here. If we could maybe do partial of it and consider the rest of it for next time, that way you have a lot more information because the concept is definitely solid. That's good, it'll do a lot of good for a lot of good people. So, we need a motion of some kind. I guess the rest of the projects were 272,000, and if we take another hundred thousand, we for I guess it'd have to be amended down to 372,000. Does that sound right? Am I the only Purdue guy here who can do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're in front of We don't know. Come on, guys. There's, there's a lot of construction management, good construction management from Purdue. Um, I'm going to try to help you with this motion. Um, Thank you. I need all the help I can I, I, so, so I move that we accept program as presented with the modification of this particular community center have a, a allocated budget of two hundred thousand dollars so that you can back come back to the commission and give us some assurances that you can build what you're talking about within the budget that you suggested so the total amount would be four hundred and seventy-two thousand, correct? Two seventy-two plus two. Are you adding in the twenty twenty-five projects? No. Okay. Well, to try no, this again, no, not at all. What, I, what I'm trying to do is allocate <laughs> their request for a million three, only two hundred thousand of that million three. Within that two hundred thousand, they need to go get, um, and, and I can spend an hour going. On. You need to go get uh, an architect, construction manager, get your drawings, get a program. I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'd probably take it all the way to construction documents. I'd get it to uh, SDs and then go get a price because you'll, you'll be able to tell by that time if you're like way over or not. And then you got to, you know, there's a fancy word called value engineering, which means cut cost. So instead of having $50 in our cart, you're going to get $30. So that you will know, you know what I'm speaking about. So that's what I'm telling you. You're going to get two hundred thousand dollars to go get that done. And come back and assure the commission you can build what you think you're going to build for the money that you set. So I believe it's four hundred seventy-two thousand. Correct. That's the number I say. So the one point three becomes two hundred thousand. Okay. So there's a motion then to make it four hundred seventy-two thousand. Right. Cutting 1.3 down to 200,000. Is there a second on that? Second. Any other questions? Hopefully, that's a good middle ground here. I think we'll then roll it. Okay, so no further questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next on the agenda is the delegation of authority to conduct racing, conduct racing business to executive director. 
this is a kind of a technical thing. Dale, you want to take that? Or? Uh, yes, Chairman. So, commissioners, each year there are matters that arise during the race meeting that require quick turnaround and quick decision making. Because the commission may not meet often enough for those uh, immediate matters to be handled, commission staff routinely request that the commission delegate authority to the executive director Pittman to handle matters that arise between commission meetings. Okay, any questions? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Oops. I'm gonna oh, how about a motion? Yeah, I'm, I'm moving along too fast. Motion. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All right. Now, no questions. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We have no old business, no new business. Take a motion for adjournment. Well, I, I just want to make a point. Since I intend to be here for the next full eclipse, Sun. Uh, I'd like to have a follow-up report after the event from Horseshoe Indianapolis so we can see what was successful and what not, what was not, and make plans for the next one. There you go. Yeah, and, and I, I know it's difficult, there. but if you can do, a, even if it's this, do a, um, a guesstimate on the number of attendees. Okay. Well, the, the new thing's the drone. So we'll be able to fly that drone yeah. out and around and be good shot. So yeah, just, uh, just, a, just a number. Motion to adjourn. Oh uh, yeah, I, I, my biggest thing of the day is motion to adjourn. Exactly. Moved and second. We are adjourned. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for participating. And we'll see what the eclipse does. What it means.